spiders, the most feared animals on the planet. Eight legs, venomous fangs, and more eyes than you'd normally want to deal with. Pretty freaky, right? Well, it turns out, when people's first reaction in seeing you is to run screaming in fear, they tend to miss some pretty weird stuff. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and it's my mission to uncover the secrets of the natural world. And spiders are full of secrets. With over 50,000 known species and counting, there's bound to be some pretty cool things that you likely didn't know about a diverse group of creatures that are around us literally all the time. Like right now. Ones in your room right now. One of the most famous spiders in the world is the tarantula. But what if I told you that tarantulas aren't actually spiders? Well, true spiders at least. Spiders are broken down into two major groups. The true spiders, or araniomorphs, and the primitive spiders, or mygalomorphs. Tarantulas fall into this primitive group and have a few morphological differences that set them apart. The biggest you can see are the fangs. Mygalomorphs usually have much bigger fangs for their body size, and they run parallel to their body, unlike true spiders, whose fangs fold or cross. And among the true spiders are another of the world's most famous spiders. Now this is a little jumping spider, a regal jumping spider, one of the most famous spider species in the world. Look at how absolutely adorable she is. Now these spiders are one of the species that I actually introduce people to first when I'm helping them get a bit more comfortable with these little arachnids. Because not only are they super interactive and very, very placid, they have those big, adorable eyes. And when it comes to spiders, the way their eyes work is actually kind of special. See, spiders are arthropods, just like insects. And normally we associate insects with having compound eyes, but spiders actually break that rule. Unlike insects, spiders actually have simple eyes, which is not unlike the eyes that you and I have. They have a lens in front of the eye that directs light back to light sensitive cells in the back. And these spiders have incredibly good vision. Where an insect, the resolution of the image they can see is limited to how many little receptors they have on their compound eyes. When you have a cluster of little cells in the back of your eye, you can actually see a lot better. So these guys can see better than dragonflies, almost as good as cats, and about one fifth as good as humans, which is absolutely insane for such a small, cool little spider. Now you'll also notice that she walks all over me. Now these spiders are incredibly intelligent and incredibly interactive. They actually will walk over you and kind of piece you together. The way they move is also incredibly special. Spiders and other arthropods do have muscles just like we do, but the way they move is actually a lot different, especially with spiders. Their locomotion is actually based on a hydraulic system, kind of like a machine. Which is funny because I've always looked at like the giant fishing spiders and wolf spiders and the way they move and compared them to like these weird clockwork machines, but it's not actually that far from the truth. Inside their cephalothorax, this part of their body right here where their eyes, fangs, and legs all come out, they have like a hydraulic pump. They pump their hemolymph, which is kind of like their blood, into their extremities to actually move them. So as she's walking over, she's actually pumping hemolymph into her legs to get them to move. And the jumping spiders, to be able to coordinate such an interesting locomotion system, they gotta be really smart. That's why I absolutely love these guys. This is actually one of my educational animals. So this isn't too stressful for her, but I wanna reward her for being such a good girl out here. And we're gonna go ahead and show you one more really crazy thing about spiders. But in order to do that, I've gotta feed her. Some people think that all spiders liquefy their meals before they eat it. Now, it's true that spiders can only digest liquids. But unlike assassin bugs, they don't actually suck the innards out like a milkshake. And we're actually gonna do feeding time with a jumping spider really quick, and I'll be able to show you how these spiders actually eat. I've got a little moth here that I'm gonna feed to the jumping spider so we can see exactly how they eat. Watch this. You can see she chews the venom into the moth. And while the venom does liquefy the insides to some degree, she'll actually eat the exoskeleton as well. And as she chews, special enzymes in her mouth will actually break down the moth's exoskeleton. Kind of like how our saliva breaks down certain foods. She can then swallow the liquid that's created, but they don't actually suck the contents out like a straw. All right, that's not all for feeding time. Right here, my little black widow. 
and uh, Black Widows are web builders. The thing about web builders is they usually don't see too well. So these web builders, the orb weavers, these widow spiders, they have to hunt for their prey a little bit differently. We know these webs are their homes, and these webs are also kind of like traps for their prey, but it turns out these spiders actually use their web as an extension of their nervous system. I have a fly right here that I'm gonna be feeding to this widow spider. You'll notice vibrations anywhere in the web. They can tell based on what strands it's traveling through, what intensity it's at, they can generally tell where in the web the disturbance is. You can see right now she's actually wrapping up the fly. I've seen a couple little bites in there. She's making sure that he's totally dead, that he's not fighting back when she actually moves him to her little food store. This web is not just a home and not just a tool for hunting, but you, she can actually feel through her web. Spiders like orb weavers and widows are able to use their webs in such a game-breaking way due to a special ability that all spiders share, hair. How is hair a special ability, you ask? Normally, arthropods have a cuticle that covers their exoskeleton, but spiders break this rule in a really cunning way. Their hairs are sensors that bridge their nervous system to the outside world through their exoskeleton, creating a super sensory coating. When many species are ambush hunters, this is brilliant. I get questions all the time. Why do spiders have hair? This is why. Sure, it makes the jumping spiders cute and fluffy, but it's a whole array of sensors that ensure no prey item will go unpounced. But these spiders can actually use those hairs for an even cooler purpose. So you've probably seen how spiders can walk on pretty much any surface. I'm about to show you exactly how they do that. See, what I've got right here is a specimen of a southern house spider. And what you can see is their feet are actually really weird looking. Under the microscope, you can see there's all those hairs all over the foot. Now, what those hairs actually do is they kind of, they kind of cheat physics a little bit. So as the spider's walking on the surface, even, even this wall, right, it feels dry to our touch, right? But there's actually tiny microscopic films of moisture everywhere. And it's thought they're actually able to use these tiny hairs and the microscopic spaces between them to actually sort of suction to those thin films of moisture, which is kind of mental, right? They're using those hairs to break physics and suction to everything. So the spider that's on your ceiling right now is using that exact property to watch you while you're watching this video. There are ways that all spiders seem to break the rules, but there are spiders still that break even spider rules. Normally, webs are for safety lines and shelter, but some spiders can use their web as weapons. Now this is the six-eyed spitting spider, and it's a weird tan little spider that only comes out after dark and hides under lots of different things. And this is probably one of the strangest spiders you could possibly come across. This animal right here has probably one of the most unique biologies of any arachnid you've ever seen. And it's where it gets its name, the spitting spider. That weird humped thorax is what gives him away as a spitting spider and not a brown recluse. And that humped thorax actually holds the key to this spider's really strange biology. Most spiders only have their silk glands in their abdomens or their epistosomas. But this spider also has two silk glands packed inside its big old head. And that is why its head is so bulbous and weirdly humped like that. I might be asking Spencer, why the heck would this spider want to have silk glands in its head? And that is where it gets really strange. See, this spider has silk glands that are attached to its venom glands and they feed through its fangs. That allows it to spray web, but it doesn't just spray web. The webs that it sprays are actually combined with this spider's venom. So when this spider sprays web, it's not just shooting web, it's shooting venom-laced web. And that is how it subdues its prey. Spider evolution is weird. Venom webs aren't even the half of it. Normally, 
We think of widow spiders and other medically significant spiders as being venomous, but most spiders actually do use venom to some degree to subdue their prey. Except for the weirdest spiders in the world, which actually lost their venom glands at some point millions of years ago and are truly non-venomous. This right here is what's known as a hackled orb weaver. And the way that it kills its prey is bizarre because it uses this extremely woolly, tangly web and it will actually wrap them super, super tight and suffocate them. But you might be asking, Spencer, suffocating the insects seems a little bit cruel. Why doesn't this spider just give them a venomous bite to end their misery? And that's the thing, it can't. Now, these spiders do have chelicerae and fangs, but they actually lack venom glands. This group of spiders in the family Uloboridae, they're actually completely venomless. They lack venom glands entirely. But it's not just the weird and obscure spiders that have surprising secrets. One of the most famous spiders on the planet is hiding a surprisingly toxic power. Now this is a very recognizable spider. This is a black widow, and it's widely recognized as the most venomous spider here in North America. But a lot of people don't realize just how venomous these things actually are. See, we think of a lot of different venomous animals here, rattlesnakes, copperheads, brown recluse spiders, and black widows. And if asked, which of those is the most venomous? You might say the rattlesnake, but it's actually this one right here. Venom toxicity is measured in lethal doses, where the lower the number, the more toxic the venom. And this particular species is the southern black widow, which has been measured to have a venom four times as toxic as some rattlesnake species. However, this isn't something that would probably kill you. With venom, the dosage makes the poison. A rattlesnake has many thousands of times more venom than this little spider does, which makes a rattlesnake bite considerably more serious. Absolutely amazing. I love these little spiders. And they're some of the most misunderstood creatures on the planet, which is why so many people fear them. And honestly, so many people go out of their way to kill them. See this little black widow? She's inches from my fingers and not doing anything. Here in North America, we have one other extremely misunderstood spider, and that is the brown recluse. These guys have a really bad reputation, but how much of it's actually true? Find out in this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.